I had a, I had a, I had a friend's mom who I thought was pretty attractive. And same thing too. Like we, we, I went to Wingstop one day, and like she smiled while she was like still eating and shit. And I saw like the ranch and the then the, the chicken just all over her mouth and shit. And since that day, she was attractive no more. So I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> we take that shit serious. Oh, shit. Let me crack this bitch open. Binary sunset. I like the name. Fucking cue the Sorry's music. Bottle. Mm-hmm. Bottle in mm-hmm. Anaheim, California. Shout out to Mickey Mouse for sending me this shit. The only good thing Anaheim has going for them. Okay. At cool. Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm about to take a sip. Oh, this right? So good. Damn. Right? Damn. Who, who gave you that? Who gave Damn. you that one? Shout out to Late Dave here for hooking me up with yeah. this with this binary sunset. I gotta explain this because this shit is good. Uh binary sunset. Hazy triple IPA, ten percent, and big boy moves. And don't be turned off by the triple IPA part, and expect it to be bitter because it's actually pretty sweet. It's got like a sweet aftertaste, I feel. And I definitely feel like I'm on on Tatooine with Luke, fucking watching at that double. Uh, sunset, you know, with the binary sunset playing in the background. So, yes, sir. Thank you, bro, thank you for providing this shit with me. I'm enjoying every sip of it. What are you drinking? I'm always looking up. I'm always looking up for my boys. Plus, <laughs> alcohol needs to be shared. Oh, um, man. man, I tried pronouncing this earlier. I'm not even going to bother. Just know that it's called Drake's. All right. Drake's Denogonizer. Denogonizer. I don't fucking know. This Drake. is what it is for anyone. Drake stole my whole fucking flow. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that shit. This is what it is. So anyone that's seeing this on video, um, that's what it is. So if you can pronounce it, kudos to you for not being illiterate. Um, <laughs> for those that are on audio, I mean, the best thing I can tell you is just from Drake's Brewing Company. Um, bottled in. Oh my god, it just said it was San. Leonardo and 9.75%. Uh, yeah, um, it's good. It's a double IPA. I think it's still an, it says it's a double IPA ale. Um, that explains the taste. Definitely doesn't taste like a hazy IPA. Like when you had that shit's all smooth and shit. This is definitely bitter. Um, I still like it. It's just I definitely don't think these are the type of like with hazy IPAs and all that stuff. Funny enough, I know they're supposed to be stronger, or whatever, and whatnot. But um, I can down those a lot faster, and I, I I personally think they just taste better. And this shit is I can't drink it as fast. I definitely have to sip it more. The only thing is I'm trying to do it fast so that um it's not all warm by the time I'm drinking it. You know, like I'm still yeah. drinking it while it's cold. But other than that, um, fucking good, good beer that's eight percent and above. That's all me, dog. I don't want to touch anything lower than that. Um, but other than that, what's going on with you, my boy? How's life been treating you since Saturday? Life is going good. I'm smoking that birthday cake from Stizzy. Hey. Shout out to Stizzy, DTLA. Is that the oh. one that you got from the bet? Mm-mm. Well, the one I got from the bet. Um, from the Classico Nacional bet. I didn't want uh-huh. to stress that again. From the 3-0. um i my one of my coworkers bought me a mango cart cbd one-to-one ratio that one was good um i felt like it was a hard little harsher on the on the on the lungs and on the throat um but but if the head high wasn't there but my body definitely felt like more recovered um definitely felt more relaxed and still able to to focus, even though even though I can still focus on like pretty crazy dosages, and I feel like I'm never really dysfunctional. Um, this one was just easier to focus and, and still do things. Um, but yeah, man, smoking on that birthday cake. It does not taste like birthday cake. Um, I don't know why I was I was uh, expecting that. Um, but but yeah, man. I mean, it's going good. The the submarine combination with this is, is smacking. 
Let's oh. see that submarine right now. <laughs> Let's see that shit. For our audio listeners, uh, Fernie's taking a nice big rip. Uh, pretty long rip. Uh, I'm starting to get worried. Okay, he's done. And oh, nice, nice swig of that uh binary sunset. And I could just feel the relaxation through the camera right now. Oh yeah. I could just feel it. <laughs> <laughs> just just vibes here on the This Food Podcast. <clears throat> No facts, no feelings, just vibes. <laughs> <laughs> As you can hear, my boys, a little Woo. too much, or just right. Hey, if you ain't coffee, you ain't smoking. Uh, oh, I like oh. that. All right, that's my excuse now. Don't be afraid of cause shit. Um, yeah, what's uh, how's the how's the school thing going on? You still you still struggle? You str- I don't think you're struggling, but you know you still. I'm struggling, it out. bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're, in, you're in college. You're struggling. Um, sure. But uh, but I mean, it's a good struggle. I'm just trying to embrace it. Um, I have, most of my friends who have graduated have told me that they miss school. Um, so I'm just trying to appreciate it and I'm looking forward to being out, man. Um, you know, it's a it's it's a cool progress. You know, like I love learning, but school is just different different form of learning yeah. no. i think i feel like there's two forms to learning there well yeah. maybe more than two but there's definitely the learning as in like conversations there's learning through experiences and then there's learning through like uh, educated matters in terms of schooling and like uh, tutoring and stuff like that you know yeah um but yeah other than that um damn uh, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to get through it. You, you're a real ass fool. Yeah, it's not going to hold you down. It's not going to hold you down. Um, other than that. Um, damn. So I was going to ask you, what do you think you're going to miss from school? I definitely miss being on campus, especially with COVID. Um, I haven't been in, on campus in a long time. So, so um I'll definitely miss being on campus. I'll definitely miss like my days long of being on campus as much as I regret that. It was just such such an adventure um, mm-hmm. that that I honestly wish I could experience again. Like I would I would go to school in the morning. Um, I would so my my favorite semester is when I had a gym in the morning that really got me into weightlifting and brought, brought me back into fitness. Um, so I had gym like seven in the morning and that really fo- forced me to wake up. So I, I love starting my day off with that and then just having a nice, nice breakfast, going to school. Um, and I was, I was smoking my car for a little bit. Um, I would watch like shit on my, on my phone. Uh, and, and, I would, and then I would go to the library and just bang out whatever homework I had and I'd be there the entire day. And I, I honestly loved that entire process. And I was away from, uh, away from home. And when I would get home, it was just a feeling of gratitude and, I, and looking back on those um i honestly wish that i had that more of those you know um and that what i would really would have appreciated the struggle that that really was you know but there's always beauty in the struggle yeah i think you touched upon an interesting thing uh you enjoyed the process not a lot of people enjoy the process of whatever they're doing you know we just want to get to the end product and then they wonder why there's no satisfaction when you reach the end it's because well you didn't really like grow or learn or appreciate the process that's why i'm really interested that's why i'm i already bought my stuff with daddy biden money i bought my (laughs) boxing stuff and um yeah so i'm just waiting for it to finally get here my boxing gloves came in my jump rope came in um, and uh my hand wraps came in Mm -hmm. so i'm really excited to crack that bitch open like put those gloves on and just feel that leather and just you know i just know that uh it's just one of those surreal feelings. Obviously, you've done fighting before. And there's just something about when you put hand wraps on. There's something about when you put gloves on. It's just, it's just this feeling like you're ready for something, you know, like you can mm-hmm. take on. It's For me, at least speaking, it definitely felt like, okay, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to battle. I'm ready to go through something, you know. Yeah. And I just know that when I have my back comes in and my stand comes in, I just know that I'm going to enjoy the process, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's the key when it comes to working out and exercising. You have to enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the process, it's going to be really hard to stay through it. 
just because you're just tormenting yourself, at least to yourself, you think you're tormenting yourself and that sucks because who the fuck wants to do that? And naturally as a human, you're not going to do that, you know? So I think that's why most people quit. So New Year's resolution, put in that work. We're in March. I say, give me three months. And when we're, whether we're in person doing this show or we're still doing it on, you know, Zoom or whatever, don't be surprised when this jawline gets a little sharper, dog. Uh, testosterone uh, kicks in. <laughs> 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 I start wearing smaller shirts. <laughs> um, but yeah, my boy, um, yeah, just, I can't wait for the process to start. You know, mm-hmm. I remember the process from before. I stopped for a while and I definitely felt like a fat fuck. I definitely felt I wasn't at my best anymore. I definitely felt, uh, I definitely felt like I was at the bottom, the bottom of the barrel, you know. Um, I know those aren't positive things to say in that, you know, in this com- uh, community, on this podcast, at least on this fool, we're all trying to be the best fools we can. Yes, sir. But a fool is not his best at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. But I definitely want to finally do something about it, you know. I'm tired of just what was me and bitching and complaining about it. It's no time for that no more, you know. We're getting old now. Got to do something now, or we just might never will. But yeah, my boy, the process. Just got to fall in love with the process. Best advice I can give to somebody: fall in love with the process, whatever you're doing. Yeah, and and definitely now that um that we can see the end of this pandemic and things are starting to go back to quote normal, I think now it's starting. It's important to set your goals or at least have a plan to what you're going to do when things do go back to normal, even though you can still implement whatever that is today. Um, you know, it's important to have a plan to to when uh, most of your opportunities will be available. Definitely. Um, no, fuck yeah, definitely. Um, you didn't say you had any uh, New Year's resolutions this year, right? Or you don't really do that? That's not your well, thing? Well, I mean, I did do it, but most of them were a continuation of my last year's New Year's resolutions, like my fitness goals, you're fit, you're fit, or at least you're training for life. So uh, those, those got carried over. I got other things like pay my tuition, uh, just small things that um, paying my tuition myself out of pocket is, uh, I felt is real big to me because that was like my first responsibility um, back when I started college. So it's something that I've carried a uh, year to year ever since then um i have a new experience as my new resolution in terms of like traveling um or doing anything new so i took care of that on uh, valentine's day actually when i went out with my girlfriend and i cooked for her in the national forest so so you know that took up a new experience for me so i can i can check that out but sh- you know new <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm leaving that up there because you know uh, um New experiences are are real cool. I want to travel. I have not done that yet, but um, I got I definitely have that plan plan. But yeah, you know that that's my New Year's resolutions. I do have goals, but you know those are just long term goals. What about you? Are your New Year's resolutions still going strong? Um, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> they kind of <laughs> fell off. <laughs> no, it's just because I haven't been making that sound like I was supposed to. You know. Um, I sound like a broken record, but just working two jobs really does make it harder because the free time I have, I have to really pick and choose what to do in their free time. And then in instances where I do have my free time and I'm saying, okay, well, this week I'm with my free, with my days off this week, I'm going to do this and that. And then next week comes and then my days off for next week are like, okay, well, I need to do this and that. And then the cycle continues, but then it starts to hit, it hits that cycle where, okay, I'm just doing errands. I'm not really doing anything fun. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything interesting. I'm not doing anything I wanted to do for myself in terms of like a new year's resolution, like I was saying before, but um, it just sucks because there's so many things I want to do. And it just feels like there's never enough time in the world, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, I guess it's one of the pitfalls of being human. Like you only get so much time in the world. You only get so much time to do what you want to do. And, you know, kudos to you or, you know, props to you if you can even do what you want to do. Because not a lot of people even get to do that with whatever time they have in life. Some of them never reach what they want to do. And it's mm-hmm. really sad. And it's like, it's a little depressing to hear. It's a little, um, it's, it's a little, not I want to say scary, but it definitely kind of gives me worry. Like, oh, what if I'm just going to be another one of them? You know, yeah, what definitely. if I don't now still get to not 
do what I want to do. Like I want to travel too. I want to fucking see all these crazy ass places. I want to do all these crazy ass things. I want to try all this food. Um, there's just a lot of things to do. There's a lot of things I'm interested in in life. And I just hope that I can make them reach fruition at some point, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I try to set up more realistic goals and I think they're realistic. Again, it's just, it's just not enough time to get them all done. And at the same time, not enough time to like really make it a habit to do it so that it's just this continuous process, you know, like I'm trying to sharpen up my, my, uh, my Spanish and my French and fuck, man, ah, it's just what I'm trying to. I, when I try to ah, oui, oui. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh shit oh um, yeah it's just i don't know man it's just it makes me more mad at myself because i didn't fucking keep the textbook i bought in that class like it was a really good textbook and it really broke down the fucking language in very easy terms to digest and very easy you know digestible pieces and my stupid ass really said i'm not gonna fucking use this again and i fucking threw that shit away this shit was an 80 dollar textbook and worst part was it wasn't even a textbook it was those fucking i don't know at your school you've ever had to get books like this but it was basically just a giant ass set of loose papers and i was it was my responsibility to buy a binder to bind them all together what the fuck yeah i mean i've had some lab manuals like that but uh yeah it was basically a manual it was basically a manual for french but I fucking, I was, yeah, stupid of me. So stupid, I didn't fucking keep it. It broke down colors in a section. It broke down numbers. It broke down fucking um, pronouns and nouns and verbs and, uh, verbs and adjectives and all that stuff. So I'm really mad that I fucking threw it away like an idiot. And I didn't keep it with the thought that maybe one day I should touch back on this. Because how boss would that be? How badass? How sick of a fool would I be if I go to fucking Paris and I'm just speaking fucking French with the fucking guy serving my croissant, you know? There you go. We're gonna, no, we're, I can't. We're going to be at the Champions League PSG game speaking French. No. Hell yeah. Talking shit in French. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to stick to it, but fuck, man. Just it's hard to stick to something when it's not a habit already, you know? But, yeah, building, building a habit is definitely hard. It's, it's surprisingly hard. Like, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you would think it's not hard, but it yeah, is. yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, man, that's cool. I remember I took French in college, but I dropped that shit. The fucking professor started speaking in French for first day of class and shit. Now, <laughs> and, it, and, and I signed up for introduction, but, but for some reason, everyone around me was speaking French and everything. And, and so like, I had to tell this lady like, yo, like, I honestly don't know what you're saying, but she just kept fucking talking. She'd walk in and that bitch like, bonjour, you know, and everyone, and everyone would be, mm-hmm. would be talking in French. And I felt like, honestly, I gave it a uh, honest shot, but nah, I had to drop it. But yeah, man, um, I I give you and other people who speak different languages a lot of credit because, you know, that's all, that's something cool, being able to communicate with your fellow, fellow person. Yeah, I mean, I, we were talking earlier and then we were talking about open-mindedness and closed-mindedness. I just feel like when you speak another language, it opens the door to another culture and that's definitely something that an open-minded person should practice you know you don't have to speak another language but just to be open to another culture really opens up your eyes on how big the world is and just how different people are and just all the crazy things we have to offer each other in terms of culture you know um i'm pretty, I'm pretty sure a french person would probably look at like you know where our, where our people come from and just be like, what the fuck like why do they do this what do they do why do they do that you know like the fuck like you guys put all this fucking shit in your food what the fuck is this you know like all this other bullshit and you know like what's the croissants and shit <laughs> but, uh, um but yeah i mean i don't know i just it's just like i don't know i i don't know if i'm in the pursuit of knowledge or something i'm just in the pursuit of experiences but yeah there's just a lot of shit i'm trying to get done trying to go through trying to get going uh do you have anything planned this week uh in terms of like crazy i don't really have anything crazy going on this week um just besides school work, just a grind, just a process, pretty much. What about you? Um, it is my girl's birthday this Wednesday, so we are definitely gonna. Apparently, we Universal Studios out here in Hollywood opened up for all my locals. Um, I wonder if that means that Horror Nights is gonna be open. I really fucking hope so because I'm I miss Horror Nights so much. I think it, I I think so. My best judgment says it's going to be open. Um, 
but limited I, capacity. No, but I think you might have to be vaccinated because, ah. uh, for, from my experiences, most of the mazes have been like indoors, um, or had like some kind of tarp inside of them. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's something that that they're gonna have to take into into consideration or not, but I think so. But I mean, I mean, if as long as it's open, now I'm gonna be there for sure. You know, <laughs> I missed, I definitely missed um, horror nights last year, and I had been going there every single year before that. Same. I've been going since 2016. Yeah, man. So not going last year was just like fuck. That's pretty cool that they're opening because I know that the city walk was open and I had mm -hmm. I went in February just to just to go see what's up. And that's the first time I actually tried the, the butter beer. But I was sad that you know it didn't have any alcohol, right? It didn't doesn't have alcohol. Oh, it Did doesn't? It? No, no. I don't know. Maybe what's it made out of then? I honestly don't know. I don't know if inside of the park, <laughs> maybe inside of the park, they have a version of, of um of it with alcohol. People who, oh, those of you who know, please let us know. Um, but at least the one that I bought in the city walk, uh, there was it didn't have alcohol, which makes sense. Why they didn't ask me for ID or I don't know. Maybe I just looked old as fuck that day, <laughs> or, or like I just didn't care. <laughs> but it was still pretty uh, good. It was surprisingly good. But I was just disappointed that there was no alcohol in it. When you went in February, you're talking about February 2021, like last, last, oh, last, last month. month you went. Yeah. Well, because he's an essential worker through a, going through a pandemic. We didn't give a fuck about your ID. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm worried you got to uh, don't have any ID. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so we're going to, I haven't even checked the prices yet, so I feel like they're going to be more than what they probably normally are, just because, you know, it's COVID, they're going to try to make their money back and whatnot. I'm assuming most likely limited capacity. Um, I'm so cool with, I fucking love Universal. I've been going there since I was like 10 or 11, yeah. and it's always been a family thing for me. So I was going there when it was still Marvel, when Marvel was mm -hmm. still having their little bullshit there. So I was going yeah. since then. I and I remember, I remember when I went, they were barely building that Simpsons land shit. And I was like, what the? Fuck, my uh, mind was blown. I, I remember and, they had they had that Nick and Nick they had Nick, Nickelodeon there too. They had like the well. Oh bears. yeah, the the fucking that water park or that water yeah 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 the yeah fuck play area. Mm -hmm. That place was fucking yeah. lit, and that and shit then, was lit. And then before the Simpsons, it was Back to the Future. Did you ever get a, the chance to do that? I never went to the Back of Future. I know it, it was there. I just never went to it. Yeah, that shit was lit. I, as a fan of Back to the Future, I'm fucking pissed that the simpsons took over <laughs> being in the delorean was fucking sick as fuck only time i got a chance to be in the delorean was it uh just like a plastic replica or was it an actual delorean car that they souped up for the oh uh, i mean park? It, i'm sure it was just a replica of it because it's it said like six people <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah no, okay but just just the idea of it <laughs> yeah yeah that's it true. was cool so you think by October when Universe or when Horror Nights kind of gets his ball rolling? Was it September or October they start? September. September oh, September. Early, okay. Or ends early November. Do you think September they're going to like, you think, do you think we're going to go back to a maskless world? Uh, no, I don't think um, that will be an option until next year, 2022. Um, mm -hmm. I think people will still continue to wear masks, but I think this year, as we're seeing, we're starting to take the steps uh, to, to, to a massless world, even though um, other states have already implemented that. You know, like I've heard, yeah. I heard that Florida, most people are massless. I'm not, I'm not saying that's good. That's a good or bad thing. Um, but, Say how you yeah. feel. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, they they have been doing that and have relatively less cases than california that's that's been closed for a long time you know i i i'm not saying i'm not saying you're wrong about anything i just i could have sworn i heard that um our numbers were actually pretty similar like we had a pretty it, same number of cases it, at least yes i'm not saying that there's a huge drastic amount and we have to consider population size as well um but if they're the same but yeah people if they're the same numbers let's just say they're exactly the same but in one one population they had to be indoors like um you know minimum most maximum restrictions you can't do this you can't do that you know but another population there's there's possibly like no regulations 
I mean, yeah. which, which one would you rather have, you know? Um, so, so I mean, I, now that we're trying to take the steps back to being open, uh, you know, who, I guess we'll just see how, how really uh, this virus transmit and, you know, um, but I, but I honestly think that we're at the end of this. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to to seeing you. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone else at, at Horror Nights. And but, I hope we all have a sick ass time. And I hope you smoke five blunts because it's gonna be a lit ass time. We're gonna drop fucking acid, and we're gonna be fucking high. <laughs> um, yeah, I I really hope. I mean, I'm just being more optimistic. I, I really do hope we reach the point. I'm not an anti-masker, but I'm not going to pretend like masks are my favorite thing to wear either, you know? I'm not going to lie to the people like that. I don't like wearing a mask either. Um, I like the social distancing because I hate motherfuckers breathing yeah. on me. <laughs> you know? um, but, I mean, I just hope we get get back sooner the better. Um, I'm happy that it's opening because then that means that if they're letting... Again, it, it is limited capacity, but if they're opening up areas where a lot of people are you know gathered then it gives me hope on what they're going to do later mm-hmm. so i'm glad to see that that's happening i love fucking simpsons land so much the simpsons is hands down one of my i know people are going to argue that it was shit after season 10 or 11 and there's like 31 years worth of tv from the simpsons but i mean it's just like one of those it's just one of those things that you just at least for me speaking it's just one of those things i just have this fondness for that i've always like no matter how bad it gets i just know i'm gonna love it because that's how much I want to say in love I am with it. It's just how much I appreciate it and like it. So um, just being in that area, I'm just like, fuck yeah. Like when I walk through Simpsons, Land, it's my favorite part to walk through because I just like see most tavern. I like seeing fucking the Krusty Burger. I like seeing all that shit. I'm just like, yes. Like it's not even like that crazy of an attraction, but just to know I'm immersed for a minute in this world that I grew up watching yeah. on TV really speaks to me in volumes like i used to abuse that game uh simpsons hit and run i don't know if you ever played it i played it fucking abuse the fuck out of that game man. every day i would play that shit missions were done story was done i was just driving around running over people fucking breaking shit and it's just being in that world that i liked so much i don't know why but it just was I'm, and i'm still kind of like that i still enjoy being in that world so to actually physically walk through it and see you know all that shit the quickie mart and all that it's just it brings this uh it brings to this warm feeling in my heart mm. as corny as that sounds but um i don't know if you saw have you seen that they're opening up a nintendo area at disneyland i mean disneyland at universal uh but in but in japan no no it's here in hollywood they're oh really up a nintendo area yeah Damn. i'm like 99 percent sure i saw a tiktok video my girl sent me a tiktok video and they were building i believe it was a back lot they're building the Damn. nintendo world Oh, bro, bro, what are we doing? Where are we at, please? For real, where are we at? Let, let us know if you want to meet us there. I got. I have to look this up. <laughs> look it up, bro. I'm pretty sure. I'm like 90% sure now. I was 99%, but now I'm at 90. But still, um, I'm sure because I recognized what I was looking at when I saw the TikTok. I was like, oh, that's fucking Hollywood. That's fucking Universal. And yeah, they had the green tarts everywhere. The, apparently, there's a sign there and shit. So, I mean, I'll look at it again. Maybe I'm just remembering it wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I'm fucking pretty sure that um that uh they're building a Nintendo Land or whatever the fuck they're gonna call it there. But I'm I'm just all for it, man. I fucking I was that kid that had Nintendo instead of uh PlayStation and Xbox. I had Nintendo first before anything else. Um, so Nintendo has this fun spot, this special place in my heart too. But um. Yeah, man, I'm just ready. I'm ready for this shit to open up. I'm ready to go engage. I'm ready to go indulge. Um, it's been a while since I've been in Universal when it was not Horror Nights. So now I'm kind of like, I want to kind of see it outside fucking at night, you know? Same here. I've never been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Because the only time I've been to Universal is for Horror Nights. Well, not the only time, but at least in recent years. Since the well, Harry Potter World's been open, I haven't been there in the day just for Horror Nights. Yeah, um, yeah, I I did I did go there one time, not recently, but I do want to say it was maybe 2016 during the summer. I just I just don't remember 
if I don't think the Wizarding World was open yet, I think they only opened one area of it, which was for the ride mm-hmm. or some sort of ride. And then the other parts of it were closed. I do remember something about that part of the that Wizarding World was closed in the Universal Hollywood. So if it's still open now, if there's going to be open, you know, by the time I go on Wednesday, then fuck it, you know, like I just want to go see that shit, you know. But um, yeah, man, fucking excited, happy, get to do something instead of doing chores and fucking staying home, being a bum. Um, for real. But yeah. Other than that, I heard you had a question. You told me you had a question for me earlier that you wanted to save. Damn. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> to to dive inside this potential wormhole, I wanted to ask you and all of our listeners, what hard truths do you prefer to ignore? The fact I'm not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I barely passed the five nine threshold, so I mean, I can say that confidently because I have been measured, and like I said, like I barely passed five nine, and that's like without shoes. So, I it just sucks because I looked up what the average American is, and it's five ten. So I'm like, oh fuck you, but oh uh, yeah, like that's probably the one truth I would <laughs> I want to ignore, but um, uh, I think on a deeper non comedic level. I think the only thing is, damn, I know there's a lot of flaws with me. I'm definitely far from ever being close to, in terms of just being halfway perfect, I'm definitely far from even halfway. But I think the biggest one from what I can remember as a child till now that I've most likely, um, hold on, repeat that question again. Let me make sure I'm like going to re- answer it answer rightly uh, correctly all right the question is what hard truths do you prefer to ignore okay so i think the harsh truth i've always been told that i want to ignore is that i um i've been told and it most likely is true then i've been told from the jump that i've always been uh temperamental i don't like to think of myself as a temperamental person I like to try to be as cool and cool as a cucumber as possible, very like calm and patient and stuff like that. But I just know, I think, I think in terms of which one I've leaned to more over my whole life, I think I've always been more on the temperamental side of things and the whole peace and calm and patient that I would like to be at. So I do strive to be patient and wise and all that stuff. But no, I think, I think my go-to has always been to be like temperamental and like emotional, but not like crying like a bitch. Mm-hmm. more of a emotional as in a like if i'm angry i just let the anger just you know get dramatic and then uh shit like that so i've caught myself but at the same time it's like fuck i shouldn't even have to catch myself because it shouldn't happen mm-hmm. but i mean that's probably the harshest that's probably the harsh truth that i've been told before that i definitely have tried to ignore and try to be and try to tell, convince myself that no i'm not temperamental i'm not emotional i'm patient and kind and like I can, um, I can be all that stuff. I don't, I'm not that. I'm not what they say I am. But I mean, that's just the harsh truth, you know. That's the reality that I don't want to accept. But I mean, whatever. Like every day, we're working on ourselves. But I guess if you want to look back at it, I guess you could wish that it wasn't a problem to start with. That that's a, a good answer, man. And and I can <laughs> and I can uh, reflect along with that as well. Um, one thing in terms of myself is that the world isn't this like uh, magical or written place. You get me? Like the mm-hmm. the world continues to move, and and whether you're moving along with it or if not, it, the world does not care. You know, and it's just willing to move on. Um, if you don't act on your dreams, uh, the the world just moves on, you know, and time time moves on. And I'm often remem- reminded of this when I'm out, like, in a hike. Uh, for example, yesterday, I was out there, I was out on a hike, and things could have easily gone gone south. And, and for a moment, I already thought to myself, like, damn, like, I could really uh, get into a bad situation here, and, the, like, the world wouldn't know, 
you know like help would mm-hmm. be help wouldn't know and and even then help would be who knows how many miles away you know like like um the the trees around me don't care if i get, make it home or not you know like the yeah like the world doesn't really care it's all up to me so so um i feel like from from time to time that's something i i choose to ignore like even he, being like at, at home i feel and then dropping my guard down i feel like in a way that's ignoring that the world uh is an Irish place where something could literally just go down right now as i'm speaking like that in terms of like um some kind of attack or or just like a, a plane falling on my house or, or or you know like some something like that and and the world will continue to move so that's i feel like that's something from living here from living in like the grid or the world that we've built now is something that i choose to ignore mm, interesting interesting Damn, we're coming out with the hardball questions, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn. If you guys have something you want to share in the comments, let us know. Uh, we promise we won't be that judgmental about it. Let A little know. judgmental, not too much, though. Let us know. We're very open-minded here at the Disco Podcast. We appreciate you, Lou. We appreciate you, Lou, for listening. Our podcasts are improving throughout the day. And thank you for joining us right here on the Disco Podcast. Um, what about you, man? I heard you you had a question to ask me as well. I did. I did forget it. I wrote it down. Um, it wasn't that deep of a question, but um, I'm trying to like, I don't know. I want to make sure I ask you a legitimate question. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, it's just a simple question. I don't know if it might get you in trouble when you lick boots with bezels, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um so, like, what's some unwritten rules at your job? What's some unwritten rules hmm. at your job? That's honestly hard to answer from home, from someone who breaks all the written rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's true. Good ass fool. Um, but I would say probably what's something that you and your co-workers would get into a fight about like it's I, not I mean, in a book i mean it's it's some tiny shit like fucking taking taking people's equipment you know i'm sure you'll 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 hear something mm-hmm. about that you know if you take someone's uh like work equipment that we use there i mean it's, it's not like personal equipment but it's just equipment that's shared throughout the work the workspace that is sometimes limited uh, so mm-hmm. maybe, maybe something like that, um, but 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 yeah, I just feel that that um, I mean, I break most of the written rules, bro. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know most of the the unwritten ones. Okay, damn, I thought I had you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, okay, so unwritten rules, unwritten rules where I work. Well. That's funny because I work at two places. So I'm trying to think. I know there's some in my first job, my day job, my night job. What the fuck are some unwritten rules? Um, hmm. <sighs> okay, for my day job, I think it would have to be um, unwritten rules. Um, shit. I don't know if I want to say it because what if they hear it? <laughs> you know? um, what if management hears it for some reason? Um, I guess it's like, damn, unwritten rules. It's such a rule that I feel like it is written, but it's not. I guess it would be like, um, don't disappear. Maybe that's one of them. Um. Yeah, like don't disappear because where I work is just an open area. It's like an open outdoor area. So obviously one of the bigger things is, you know, don't um, don't fucking because we could basically just walk around anywhere. We're not restricted to certain areas, but, you know, you just don't want to disappear because, you know, people are going to be wondering where the fuck you went. And, then you know, you're just going to get in trouble because it's going to look like you were just bullshitting and shit. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, you might be bullshitting, but people don't need to know that you're, you're bullshitting, you know? Um, I guess that's one of them. Maybe another one is, like, um, kind of do your work without telling people what to do. Like, there's a difference between leading somebody and then telling somebody what to do. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big one. Um, I've already gotten to arguments before with other people just because mostly like my biggest argument was recently with someone that doesn't work there anymore. Thankfully, uh, she was cool for a time. But then like this day that she kind of blew up on me, she tried to like chew, she tried to chew me out. No, nah, like that was it. Like I never talked to her anymore after that. I barely ever acknowledged her. And it's just because I know that the way the shit she tried to get mad at me for. Not, it's not shit to get mad about and even if you want to try to justify your your reasoning for being mad i've had to go through worse at that job than she did so if i can get through what's worse you can get through what's baby shit you know so if so the thing that bothered me the most was that she tried to tell me that i need to work harder but then again i'm the guy that works in different areas and does all this other shit and she only does one specific thing So it's kind of like, how the fuck are you going to tell me to work harder when I do more work than you when I'm asked to do it? Just because I try to chill and not do shit sometimes and you do the same thing and you think because you're bullshitting by creating these unneeded tasks in your head and then doing them, you know, like, oh, let me go clean this certain area or some dumb shit. It doesn't mean that you're working harder than me. You're just bullshitting harder than me. Um, And the thing that pissed me off more was that there's other people that work there too, obviously. So... I just know for a fact she it, it hasn't happened, but I know for a fact that if they were the person that was in my position on that specific day that led to her getting mad at me the next day, I know for a fact she would have never said shit to them. But she had the biggest fucking balls to come say shit to me, which is what irritated me the most, because I'm probably the least likely one to talk shit to about that just because I'm not going to hope I'm not going to bite my tongue if you come at me, you know. Like, we can talk and be diplomatic, but if you want to come at me swinging, like, you can't get mad then at me if I swing figuratively back. But, yes, yeah, like, I guess that's the unwritten rule. Like, don't try to dictate what other people need to do if you don't. Don't try to tell people what to do, basically, if you're not the manager. Don't. Just don't. I feel like that you know? can be applied to to a lot of a lot of workspaces. There's always that one motherfucker that takes her job way too serious. And she- <laughs> <laughs> that's always that one boot liquor that's like the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'll drink that. <laughs> let us know let us know uh for the people who are listening what's what's the unwritten rule at your place just let them know how you're feeling give us some feedback here um bro i just want to thank you about this uh beer again it's fucking delicious <laughs> is it really you're feeling it hell yeah it's real good um I feel like this person right here, for the people who are listening. That's you? <laughs> for the people that are listening, uh, there's an astronaut person uh, just laying there, on the sand. There's like, yeah, there's like two astronauts laying, making like uh, sand, sand angels, angels on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're just like vibing, you know? They're I just hope, vibing in space. I hope that's you guys listening to the This Will Podcast. We appreciate you guys for listening. Yeah, fuck yeah, for sure. Like 100,000 bajillion percent thank you guys so much because time is definitely not something you're going to get back in life so the fact you guys are going to spend that time listening to us you guys are the fucking real mvp you guys fucking deserve all the accolades and praise in the world but i was going to ask you real quick before i forgot and now i actually forgot um oh what's the worst bootlicker you've ever ran into at any job you've had oh do we want to go down that route (laughs) oh shit Damn, why I've, I've honestly met a few. Um, Does anyone take the cake? Man, I don't know if anyone takes the cake, but I remember this certain situation in, uh, in particular where someone did not finish like the job that the managers were expecting. Mm-hmm. And so this person said, you know what? Like, it's okay. I'll clock out and I'll finish the job. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, th- and that to me was just mind blowing because it's like, okay, bro, like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't give a fuck, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, my God. But, um, 
you know, I've met a few, but that situation, that, uh, you know, uh, experience really stands out. Damn. You know, it's funny. I've done that before, but not because I'm a bootlicker. It's because I don't want to hear shit from somebody the next day. So I'm going to just hammer that shit out right now. Because God forbid I get into an argument with someone over some shit I don't give a fuck about, you know? Mm. But um, I feel like the biggest bootlickers I've met have been um, have been at uh, a place we sh- we both shared together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say their names, but they were, I think, were they, were they considered ASMs or supervisors? Oh, fuck it. I'm going to just say their name. It was fucking... Like, <laughs> you, 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 you just say their first name. You don't got to say their whole name. Uh, it was uh, Angel and um, Hyro. Uh-huh. Bootlickers, dog. Fucking bootlickers, man. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't with them. I just fucking, I could, man, every time I would see them, like, yeah, they'll be nice to me and I'll try to be cordial. I'm just thinking, fuck, man, shut up. You think I give a fuck about these sales? I don't get, I don't see anything from these. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. They're like, oh, you, you're stacking those jeans all nice and you're making the displays look all good. Like, I don't give a fuck, Hyro. I want to go home. Fuck this shit. I fucking hate it here. But I think that's just my hate for retail in general. Like I done retail enough to just know I fucking hate it. You know, I shared my time at different places of different like it's retail, but it's different places. And I just know for a fact there's a lot of bullshit that happens in retail, and it just doesn't matter what thing you sell, what you stock, it's all bullshit at the end of the day. We're just another cog in the machine, as you've told me before. Uh, I, I fucking hate it. I only had like one retail job in terms of like I'm trying to sell a product and never again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And, yeah, and like I I hope I hope some of you can take that as advice because that shit's hard, man. <laughs> that shit's hard. Hey man, if you're like in high school about a graduate, you need a job, bro. Just fucking let retail be your last decision. Yeah, let retail, let fast food be your last decision. I've never worked Tried at it. fast food, so I can't talk for that. But for retail, yeah, like, like there's definitely better op- opportunities out there. I can only imagine fast food is even worse, just because you know motherfuckers gonna be more entitled because it's the food that they're buying and they want that. It, they go to Carl's Jr. wanting five star meals and shit, you know. So I can only imagine that they're just fucking on some other dumb shit. But yeah, if God, so, man, just this is a avoid Wendy's. those. <laughs> exactly out here asking for a big max at wendy's or some dumb shit you know ah uh, like ugh, fucking i can't man fucking retail I fucking hate retail I hate that show the passion that's why i like working with animals so much more especially that two of my animals came from the shelter so i know that there's a lot of like uh there's more worth to the work i do working with animals that uh, i genuinely do appreciate it more i i'm still licking boots it's just a different set of boots that I'm looking and I, one day we hope to stop licking boots completely, you know, but, um, but yeah, man, I don't, I don't fucking, I can't, I couldn't want them to do it. If I can at Levi's at least, I don't give a fuck. I'll say, I'll say what I want. Um, dude, I just have fucking Levi's like, yeah, I'm always thankful for a job because I've been without a job before for a long period of time when I had bills and that shit was super stressful. I fucking, I truly hated life and I truly was, I wouldn't say I was depressed because I don't want to throw that word loosely, but yeah, I very had I had little motivation in life, but um, yeah, just working at retail though and at Levi is fuck man, like especially when it was like Black Friday or the holidays and then you'll try to hype us up like we're some fucking where are the Lakers on a championship run? Like shut the mm-hmm. fuck up! These assholes obviously need jeans. We're not fucking gonna. Why are you acting like we're in the fucking World Series? Like no dick, they're coming. They're gonna spend whatever money they're gonna spend, and that's it. Just tell yeah. me the size you fucking need and the color you fucking want it in. And, and I'll go see it. if I have yeah. it in the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Know. That's it. Yes, sir. They made this shit like some crazy ass process and shit. Exactly. Yeah. And like, like he described it, like we were the Lakers in the fucking NBA finals and shit, game seven. You know. There was a time when um, Saul and uh, Angel described it as like being in the Super Bowl. And I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, it is not. Oh, my fucking God. I, I remember um, Daniel kept us open. Like he kept us open for like an hour longer and shit. He kept us oh open for, for an hour longer because he, he, they were close to making like the, the year goal or whatever. 
you know, so it was the last day. It was the last day. It's like, we got to make it today or we don't make it. And he was like, oh, bro, we're so close. We're like a few a few dollars away or whatever. I don't know how many dollars, whether it was like dollars, hundreds or thousands of dollars away from the goal. But he kept us open for a whole hour. It's like, motherfucker, like, do you not realize that, <laughs> that like, you know, like, I'm going to have to fix this shit. After, like, you know, like, I've already fixed this shit twice, you know, and, and, and you're letting people c- keep coming in. You know, like, and I'm not going to see any of the money from you that you guys are going to make it. Like, you obviously care because you have a bonus. But the people who are doing the hard work and shit, the people who are out there dealing with all these rude ass people yeah. are going to see a dollar from that. And it was crazy because, like, I remember that was my first job. And I and I was surprised of how rude people were actually were. You know, and I honestly had no idea that, that some people were really that rude. Like, people really didn't know how to say, excuse me, please, and thank you for just your basic shit. Yeah, because fucking this is what I hate about, like, service, even working with animals. And I also work at a, at a hospital. And it's just, damn, there's, just, like, really some entitled motherfuckers out there that they just truly believe the world revolves around them. And it's fucking baffling. You could dim it down to the simplest of terms for them. And they still believe that you have to bend to their whim. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, like, since working with animals, I can't, I can't understand the idea that people think that, oh, I have animals, so every service I should have, they need them, you know, their vaccines or they need surgery or whatever, it should be free. Like, what the, f- what, like, what the fuck logic is that, you know? Yeah. Where the fuck did you get this idea that it needs to be free? This is still a service you're paying for. You don't go to the fucking hospital and just tell them, oh, I need fucking medication, so it should be free because I need it. And then you don't do that. So where the fuck is this logic coming from? Mm-hmm. But, man, I think I've met worse people in the animal field than I'm, like, customer-wise, I guess, than I've met in retail. And that's saying something because you would assume retail is probably, like, the worst. But, no, like... I think I've met worse people working since I've been working with animals. Like some people are pulling up in Porsches and Teslas. And I've looked at the prices for those cars because I know my cars. So I'm looking them up while they're in the parking lot. They're running around in $80,000 cars and they don't want to spend more than a hundred dollars on their fucking pet. And that shit just baffles me because they like, really like you, this is where you draw the line. Your pet's sick and needs help. And this is where you draw the fucking line. Not the $80,000 car that you didn't need. You could have just fucking got a Toyota like everyone else. But no, you felt the need to fucking get an expensive ass car, which is cool. You can afford it. But now you want to bitch about prices for your animal. And then, bro, my fucking, bro, my fucking landlord had the caucasity. She's not even white, but she, she had the caucasity. She had the caucasity to hit up my girl. Ask her if she could take her dog the landlord's dog. My landlord wanted my girl to take her dog to the hospital to get something done or ask about prices. And that she had the nerve to tell us that the hospital's price gouge and that it's super expensive and it shouldn't be that expensive. I'm like, bitch, you know how much you're charging for this trash ass fucking apartment? <laughs> and you want to talk about price gouging? The fuck? And the worst part is, is like people think that hospitals just want to charge up the ass. And yes, it's medic. It's that's the thing too. It's a still a medical field. It's an animal medical field. Like there's medications involved. There's drugs. There's fucking drugs involved. And these drugs have high ass fucking street value. So if I were to take a pack and move it on the street, that shit's gonna sell for a lot of money. And there's a reason why it costs a lot. So people think that oh, it should be cheap. Like, no, dude, like these are drugs we're getting from other companies. Like they're gonna charge us what they're gonna charge us. We obviously have to make profit off of that too. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have to charge something. We're going to have to charge what feels unfair, but it's to keep the hospital running. You know what I mean? Like, it's all business still at the end of the day as well. Yeah. Like, yes, the people there are doing it for the care and love of the animals, but come on now. Like, you can't, you know, you want a fucking $35 vaccine for $5. Like, no. Like, that's not how it works. You know, this is all, this is a bunch of other bullshit that's in the mix. But fuck, man. So I can go on a whole tangent about just the workforce right now. Fucking trash. Yeah, but lick, licking boots is not fun. I fucking hate this shit. And in the perfect world, they would be free, but you know, unfortunately, that's not where we live. But we, can, <laughs> we can only hope to strive to that perfect world. Yeah. So PSA for any of you people that want a pet: if you honestly don't have money, if you don't have a credit card with a nice fat limit, don't get a fucking pet because that shit can run up at any moment, and that shit is not fucking cool, and that shit's gonna be really bad. 
when it hits that high price and goddamn like just and you better hope that motherfucker never gets sick so a lot of people don't understand i say too much and i'll just leave it at this a lot of people get puppies because you know they're cheap or craigslist or whatever they get puppies right your girl will probably tell you this too but if they get this thing called parvo mm-hmm. bro the puppy killer you better yeah yes. you if you if you if they get parvo Bro, you better have some deep pockets because that shit costs a lot of fucking money to treat because they have to beat that shit for like almost a week at least. Mm-hmm. Normally, it's like I've seen the range go from three to five days sometimes, but there's some puppies that are just not doing good after five days, and that shit's a lot more money because it starts piling on more. They need they need to try all this other shit to like get them healthy, get them going. But yeah, man, like if you get a puppy, you better get them off like a vaccinator, make sure he's not around other puppies. You got to make sure they're good because if they get parvo, they're powerful, powerful positive, bro. Fucking, hey man. Like I said, I just hope you have deep pockets, cause that shit is fucking. It's gonna cost a really pretty penny, and that's kind of why I'm scared about getting a puppy right now, because I'm scared of that off chance he does get parvo. But I mean, I don't know. Whatever, I guess I have a pretty good credit limit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my boy, fucking hate these bootlickers. Hate the system. Uh, but it's crazy is that you didn't create the system, you were just born in it, and that baffles right. me every day. That baffles me that I'm born in the system, I don't even get a vote on like certain shit, like I don't get a vote if we go to war or not, I don't get a vote on all this other all oil prices, like I don't get a vote on nothing. Mm-hmm. I just gotta go sacrifice my life for a fucking oil and when we have electric cars on the way. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just trying to go buy another day, I guess. Another day in the matrix, another day in the system, another day in the simulation. But I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I guess as of right now, we just gotta strive, strive for the best, you know. Yeah, if we live long enough to see ourselves become the enemies, if we go from bootlickers to having our boots licked, I'll be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I don't know, my boy. Any other questions? Or you think we're good? You think we cover some interesting topics today? Or what? No, no, man, no. I'm solid. Um, thank you to the listeners for joining us. Hit us up on our IG. We're always looking for suggestions, or conditions, or questions. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed us, man. What about you? Um, no, nah, I'm just gonna pick it back off of what you said. Just thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for taking the time. You know, like I say, you don't get the time back. So if you guys are choosing to listen to us, I mean, greatly appreciate it. Um, you guys are some real ass ones. Um, yeah, I mean, just if there's anything worth taking from this podcast of two fools just being fools, I think the on the only honest advice I would have for somebody is just strive to be your best your best version for you, not for nobody else, not for your family, not for your job, not for nobody else please do it for you because you matter enough to do it for yourself. So just, just be the best you, you know, and just do that. And that's it. Like, again, just thank you guys. Real last ones. Um, and yeah, man. See you guys next week. Uh, we'll try to get some interesting topics going. I know we just go on tangents and just talk our bullshit, but that's what we do here at this fool. We don't give a fuck. We're just two lit ass fools. Um, but other than that, my boy, I think we're good. Later on, guys, give us your suggestions or comments or concerns. There, I'm no way out of here.